Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. They say you can take the boy away from the farm, but you can't take the farm out of the boy. And it's a good thing this is true, because there are times when the men under my command who are farm boys have to help out in different places for one reason or another. This time it was to do most of the harvesting of the wheat fields outside of Central City. The farmers of that area were stricken with a particularly violent type of influenza, and 90% of them were in bed or in the hospital. The wheat had to be harvested, and ripe grain doesn't wait for anyone. Well, I think I've said enough. Now, let's see. Suppose we call this story... The White Fields. Well, let me have your attention, fellas. Uh, and we're faced with another serious problem in the farming country, as you well know by this time. I've been asked to send some more help, as I've done before, and I've agreed to do it. However, the forest is pretty dry because of moisture shortage, so I can't send all the men I want to. To start off the loan of manpower, I'm sending Marty Nelson, Larry Fleming, and Morgan Connors to help harvest the wheat. You see any problems in this move? Yeah, boss, I got an objection. Okay, let's hear it, Lefty. Uh, the rest of us that helped out two years ago are going to miss some powerful good grub. Boy, can those farm women cook. Man alive. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to have to abuse your stomach so badly, Lefty, but uh, I just can't risk sending any more men. Okay, Bill, you're the doctor. I'll have to talk to my bread basket and explain how things are. <laughs> uh, Marty, Larry, Morgan... Uh, you fellas had better start for Central City as soon as possible. Take a ranger car and report to the county agricultural agent as you did before. The rest of you can head back to your post and starve to death. How's your water supply, Morgan? I've got plenty, Larry. Help yourself. I don't know what's the matter with me today. I'm like a thirsty sponge. We're not used to the heat and dust of the wheat fields. Except old Marty. He keeps going. Oh, he eats it up, too. Yeah. Whoops. Almost spilled some of it. Maybe he ought to get back to the farm. He'll never change. Too solid. Too much of a family man. Yeah, and he likes the security of a government job. Well, thanks for the water, old Bean. Uh, don't mention it. You know, I'd say we're really covering acres with these combines. Ought to. We eat lunch out here, and we're going from the time the dew dries off in the morning until almost dark. And that's what we came for, combine grain. See you later. Sure enough. How'd it go, fellas? Okay, Marty, how about you? I finished 100 acres. Uh, good going. I didn't quite make that much. <laughs> what, uh, three inches short of it or something like that, Morgan? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Well, let's eat and take a cat nap, huh? You said it, man. No time to waste, John. Right. Wheat's getting riper every day. <laughs> Say, 
Must have really dropped off. What time is it, Morg? Oh, just about. Where's Marty? Oh, over yonder a piece. Didn't he take a snooze? Nope. He pretends to. And after we've dropped off, he gets up and wanders off a spell and just stands there looking out over the grain fields. Huh. What do you know about that? I wonder why. Uh, maybe he's got something on his mind. If he has, you can't tell it by his work. A man's a fiend for work. Well, I guess it's about time to get back to work, eh, fellas? Yep, up and at him. Marty, what's bothering you? Now, let him alone, Larry. It's his business. Hey, Marty. Huh? What's the matter? That's what I'd like to know. You've kind of been in a fog since you came out here. Everything all right? Oh, yeah, sure, everything's fine. We know it's none of our business, and you can tell us to mine our own if you like. But we've been wondering if, well, if you need help. No, fellas, it's nothing like that. I've been sort of daydreaming. Well, I know you like farming real well. Been dreaming about having one of your own? Well, not exactly. But yet it might be. You really aren't thinking of leaving the Forest Service, are you? Oh, no, I'm all right. Really, I am. Now, let's get back to cutting gray. Then sent me up to his disciples. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest... Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Betty, what is it? Daddy's coming up the trail. He's coming home. Oh, how wonderful. I'll call Danny and we'll go meet him. Hurry, Mommy, hurry. I will, dear. Danny, come quickly. Yes, Mom, what is it? Daddy's coming up the trail. Hot dog. Daddy, Daddy. 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 Hey, Daddy. Hey, Daddy. Hey, Daddy. you two. Cut it out. Take it easy on your old dad. He's sore from riding tractors. Did the tractor kick, Daddy? <laughs> no, but the bounce and lurch and jiggle. And Daddy's black and blue and sore all over. <laughs> I know where you're sore. And it isn't all over. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> How are you, dear? Oh, it's fine. <laughs> Come along and I'll fix a hot bath for you and your black and blue mark. Mm, sounds wonderful. Oh, I'm sure glad to be home. Daddy? Yes, dear? Can you buy me something, Daddy? Yeah, Dad. Did you? Say, what kind of hijacking is this? Every time I go away, you youngsters expect me to come back loaded with stuff. No, but you said you might. You sure did. <laughs> well, now, um, if I were you, I'd take a look at my saddlebags, and you just might find something in there that you'd like to have. Come right, on, let's go. <laughs> hey, to take it easy, there's a package there for your mother, and I don't want it ruined. How does it feel to be so popular? <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> Say, what happened to that hot soaking I was promised? Well, I have to heat the water unless you want to sit on top of the stove. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll get Jenny unsaddled and my gear put away while the water's heating. All right, it won't take long. Oh, uh, by the way, Irene... Yes? After the children are in bed this evening, I want to have a long talk with you about something very important. Night, Daddy. It's sure swell to have you home. Good night, dear. It's good to be home. Same for me, too, Dad. Good night. Thanks, son. Good night. Night, Good night, Mommy. Mom. Good night, honey. Don't forget to say your prayers now and have a nice rest. Come on, Danny. Last one to hit the haze at Doodle. Children. Yes, Mother. No pillow fights. Oh, uh, we won't. Good night. Good night. Good night. Come on. <laughs> oh, those two fireballs. Where do they get the pep? 
What do you put in their food that you don't put in mine? <laughs> I've wondered the same thing myself, dear. Where do they get their zip? The supply never seems to run out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it doesn't. I um, suppose you're wondering what's on my mind. Uh, yes. Well, I... Uh, dear, I believe the Lord's calling us to the mission field. <laughs> I know this must come as a shock, dear, but... I know definitely that he's called me. I wasn't silent because of shock, dear. It's simply that I was amazed at your remark because I felt the Lord talking to me about the mission field, too. You... you have? Yes, very definitely, and especially since you left to help harvest the wheat. Oh, the Lord works in wonderful ways to accomplish his plans. You know, Irene, when I was out there, I'd look out over the white fields and... I didn't see heads of waving grain, but I saw the faces of millions of people crying out for the news of salvation. John 435 kept running through my mind constantly. Hmm. Oh, say ye not, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest? Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields. For they are white already unto harvest. Yes, and then there are the words spoken to Paul. Come over into Macedonia and help us. Dear, I know now that the Lord has called us beyond any doubt. What do you mean? Weren't you sure before? Yes. And no. I was concerned about you. Marty, I'm surprised at you. Haven't we always worked together? Yes, that's very true, dear, but... Well, you married a ranger, not a missionary. I, I pray that the Lord would speak to you about this, and, well, I know now that he's answered my prayers, even as I was saying them. And I know now why the Lord was talking to me while you were gone. Oh, yes. Well, let's pray about it before we turn in. In the morning, I'm going into headquarters and tell Bill about it. Oh, I, I wonder what he'll say. I don't know. But if the Lord prepared you for this... Well, he can also prepare my boss. Hi, men. Hey, what goes back home? Well, if it ain't the old wheat harvester himself. How are you, Marty? <laughs> Just fine, Stumpy. How are you fellows? Right, tolerable. <laughs> Well, uh, where's Bill? Me and Grey Wolf are out on the North Range, you're checking fire lane. And uh, we're loafing. What's your course is plain to see. Yep. <laughs> I don't envy anyone loafing a spell in this game, because you more than make up for it shortly afterward. When do you uh, think Bill will be back? Well, that's hard to say, young feller. Possibly two days, if everything goes all right. <sighs> well, I guess I'll just have to wait and see him then. Well, uh, why don't you sit a spell and spin yarns with us? Henry, see if there's any coffee and biscuits left. Sure. I think the coffee's still hot, too. Sure. Thanks, fellas. I don't mind if I do have some coffee and a roll. Then I'll have to be heading back up the trail. I've got a lot of work to catch up that piled up while I was gone. Smells good, that does. Think I'll have some varnish remover, too, Sonny. Okay. Yeah, thanks. And Marty, Bill's mighty pleased with the job you're doing up at Straight Up Mountain. Has he been up there? You know, Bill, he's always moving around, and he sees, but he doesn't look, and he hears, but he doesn't listen. Yeah, the two of us were by your station about a month ago, and he sure was pleased with the way things are shaping up. Good men are hard to come by nowadays, you know. I didn't know that. Yep, that's the truth. Bill, stop by and tell you what a good job you're doing, but I thought it might help jack up your morale to hear it sooner. Thanks, old-timer. I appreciate your telling me. Sort of puts a new light on things. What do you mean by that, Marty? Oh, nothing really, just thinking out loud. Well, thanks for the eat. I've got to be running along. Okay. Glad you stopped by. So am I, Henry. Enjoy the visit. 
Uh, Marty! Uh, yes, old timer, what is it? Are you sure everything's all right? But of course, why shouldn't it be? Well, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. What do you want to talk to us about, Daddy? Yeah, Dad, what's cooking? Well, you see, your mother and I are thinking seriously of going to the mission field to preach and teach the gospel to those who've never heard it. Aren't you going to take us with you? Of course we are, dear. But we wanted you to know what we plan to do. We want to know how, how you feel about it. Will we go on a boat? I'd like that. <laughs> <laughs> how about you, Danny? Sure. Can I tell the boys and girls about Jesus? Oh, I'm sure you'll be able to after a while. Well, why can't I do it right away when we get there? Well, we'll have to learn their language first. Oh. Well, that's okay by me. Wherever you and Mom go, that's okay with me. Oh, I'm glad you feel that way about it. Can we be excused? Yes, dear. Come on, Danny. Help me fix my doll buggy. Okay, come on. I'll raise up. You seem rather glum since you came home, Marty. Did Bill take the news badly? No, uh, it was worse than that. What do you mean? What did he say? Nothing. He, he's out on the trail, the gray wolf, and he won't be back for two days. Stumpy was telling me how pleased Bill is with my work and how nicely things are shaping up out there since I took over the station. Well, that's the truth, dear. You have worked hard. I don't see why a pat on the back should make you glum. Uh, it's going to make telling him that much harder. Bill's a good boss. He's not only that, but he's a good friend. It won't make it any easier for me to tell him, that's for sure. Oh, I know it won't, but it's one of the many problems we're going to have to overcome. I know that, but well, you don't understand. We're going to have to leave before the end of summer because we're going to have to go to school for a while, and well, that's going to put Bill in an awful spot. And I don't like putting him in a spot. You know, Bill's a different kind of a guy than the usual, and... You know what I mean. Yes, I do. The way you've worked out here and applied yourself mentally and physically told me you were happy with your work, and that meant you had a wonderful boss. I know it won't be easy for you. No, but, well, I guess we'll have bigger problems than this. And the Lord's promise to give us strength to overcome them. Well, we'll pray about it, and I think I'll go in town late tomorrow afternoon and... Talk with the pastor. I think that's a fine idea, and I'm sure Bill will be all for us 100%. Oh, sure he will. I'm just letting old Satan get me down. I'll finish writing those letters to the mission boards and see what they have to say. Yes, Mrs. Jones? I'm sure it will, Mrs. Jones. Uh-huh. Well, thank you for calling. Goodbye. <laughs> you need a telephone secretary, Pastor. <laughs> You're not joking, Marty. Hazel, will you take any phone calls for a while? Uh, I'd like to talk to Marty without interruption. All right, I'll listen to the phone. Thank you. Marty, a good wife is a priceless possession. I know what you mean. Now, let's see. Where were we? Oh, yes. So you feel the Lord's called you through the mission field. I not only feel it, I, I know it, just as sure as I'm sitting here talking to you. I'm glad to hear you say that. Knowing the Lord's will is a problem for a lot of Christians. I think it's because they won't sit still long enough so the Lord can talk to them. He wants undivided attention when he's speaking, just like any of the rest of us. You know, I never thought of it that way. But it's true. I'll try and remember that for future use. Fine. Remember one thing, Marty. Don't let Satan weigh you down and sap your spiritual strength with discouragement. He uses that weapon very effectively, even on strong Christians. The Lord is your strength, and on him you must rely. And then you can say, as Paul did, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Put your hand to the plow and never look back. Never. Oh, I appreciate your words more than you know, because... 
Well, I've already had problems since our decision to go to the mission field. Problems, yes, you'll have lots of them. The Lord never promised us a bed of roses, but he did promise to give us the grace we need from day to day. And remember, Marty, he'll never fail you. God bless you, Marty, and your family. I'm honored to have you in my congregation. Oh, thank you. Well, I must be going. Oh, there's just one thing that puzzles me about what you said. Yes, what's that? Well, you haven't really said whether you thought our going to the mission field is a good idea or... Or not. Or whether you agree with our decision. Marty, the Lord has spoken to you. And he'll speak again and again. In your case, there's nothing for me to say. Who am I to add to or take away from the Lord's decisions? If God has called you, you'd better go. Marty, Irene. Hello, Mr. Reed. Hello. Hello there. How are you, Betty, Danny? Fine, thank I'm you. I'm well. The pastor told me about your decision to answer the Lord's call to the mission field. And I want you to know that I'm thrilled. My prayers for you will never cease. Thank you, Mr. Reed. I'll bring this up before the church board at the next meeting. I... I wish you wouldn't just yet, Mr. Reed. Well, why not, Marty? It's definite, isn't it? You probably don't know yet just what field, but it's definite that you're going, as I understand it. Oh, that's true, but... Well, I haven't told Bill yet, and he's my boss. Well, tell him, then. Bill's not a hardhead. In fact, he's one of the finest Christian gentlemen I've ever met. Oh, I know. That's the whole trouble. <laughs> Marty, how are you? Fine, thank you. Say, the county agent says you fellas did a bang-up job getting the weed in. Thanks very much for putting you back to the wheel. Oh, don't mention it. I was glad to do it. I've uh, got some good news for you, young fellow. It, you have? Yes, sir. Colonel Anders has asked me to recommend one of my men to be foreman of the tree farm, and I've picked you. It'll be a good promotion for you. You'll have 50 men under you and a raise in pay and... Irene won't have to live out in no man's land ten months of the year. Well, what do you say? What's the matter, Marty? Don't you want the job? Sure. I, I mean, I might... Well, then I, I might not... Marty, what's wrong with you? Are you in trouble? Oh, no. Uh, well, I really don't know yet. Look, do you mind if I give you my answer in a couple of days... Why, no, I don't mind. Take all the time you need. There's no big rush. Thanks much. I'll be going now. Oh, they're sorry, but they feel I'm too close to the maximum age. In other words, too old. Oh, well, there are more letters. Uh -huh. Let's see here. Um, they feel that I've got too much experience in my present field, and they don't have a field where they can send me to use my experience in education in forestry and related fields to maximum capacity. What does all this gibberish mean? They could be right, you know. Yeah, maybe. Oh, I suppose this one is more of the same. Read it, Marty. I can't. You read it. Here. Right. They haven't any openings at the present time, and they feel it would take too much training to do you over. Yeah. I'm beginning to think so, too. What are you thinking of? 
I'm thinking of going back into town in the morning and accept the job at the tree farm. No, no, Marty, you can't do that. You can't fail the Lord. I won't fail him. We can be missionaries here at home. But, but what about the white fields? I don't know. I, I really don't know. Say ye not there yet four months, and then cometh the harvest? Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the field. Well, they are white already to harvest. job, Marty. A promotion with a raise in pay. Put your hand to the plow and never look back. Irene won't have to live in no man's land ten months out of the year. We're thrilled about your decision to go to the mission field. It's a good job. Okay by me, Dad. Never look back. Good men are hard to come by. God spoke to you. Lord, please. Lord, speak to me now in this time of of indecision and weakness. Show me thy will. In Jesus' name. Amen. Marty, it's Irene. I uh, don't know if anything's wrong. In fact, she sounds like she got some good news for you. Oh, thanks. Hello, dear. Yes. You don't say. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, I'll be home in a little while. Bye. Good news? I'll say. <laughs> By the glow on your face, I'd say it's very good news. Yes, it is. Bill, I... I've got something to tell you. Okay, shoot. I hate to say this to, to, to you, but... Well, the Lord's called Irene and me to the mission field, and she just called to tell me that a mission board's accepted us and we're to leave later in the summer for school. Like I I'm say... I'm glad I... you decided to accept, Marty. May the Lord's richest blessing go with both of you. You're not angry with me for leaving you in a spot? No, why should I be? We all must be in the center of the Lord's will or we won't be happy Christians. I wondered how long it would take you to tell me. You, you knew all along? Oh, sure I did. But oh, how? I have a very good friend on that mission board who asked me for a reference. And you didn't block it? Of course not. You see, Marty... I've seen the white fields, too. Only I've seen them from a different view than you have. Go out there and begin the harvest, young fella. The Lord does indeed work in strange ways to complete his plans, but he gets the job done. You think about our story today and see if it fits you anywhere along the line. Profit by it. By all means, talk to the Lord and make sure you're in His will. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill!